Good morning. It's Wednesday and time for devotions. I would invite you to join with me as we engage in our invocation. Let's pray. Lord God, in whom I find life, health, and strength, through whose gifts I am clothed and fed, through whose mercy I have been forgiven and cleansed, be for me guide, strength, Savior, and Lord all the days of my life. I offer my prayers through Christ. Amen. And uh, we're, this week's uh, theme is the Good Shepherd. And we're going to be looking at Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel 34, verses 11 through 16. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when some of his sheep have been scattered abroad, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the fountains, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and upon the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on fat pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring the strayed, and I will bind up the cripples, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will watch over. I will feed them in justice. May God add his blessing to this reading from his word. <clears throat> it's uh it it sounds it sounds great. And uh and it is great. And it is a promise. It is a promise to the people of Israel, it is a promise to you and I as followers of Jesus Christ. We uh are under the care of the good shepherd, the best shepherd, the most caring shepherd, the shepherd that will do all these things, caring for his flock, taking care of the lambs, guarding us, seeking us out, going out and finding us, chasing us down, bringing us back. Um, <clears throat> when we enter into a relationship with God, uh, I'm a good Western Arminian, so I don't believe that uh, you know, you can do anything you want to and, and never have to worry about it. But um, when, uh, you know, we, we certainly have a God who chases after us. When we go in directions we shouldn't go, God pursues us and brings us back. Now, as I said, this sounds great. It's probably worthwhile for you to take a look at what precedes it in this passage. Uh, Ezekiel 34. And uh, here's the, here's the uh, opening words. The word of the Lord came to me. That is, uh, Ezekiel was a prophet. God was speaking to him and through him to the people of Israel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, Thus says the Lord God, O shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. The weak you have not strengthened, the sick you have not healed, the crippled you have not bound up, the strayed you have not brought back, the lost you have not sought, and with force and harshness you have ruled them. Um, these are not the good shepherds. These are the shepherds, if you will, of Israel, people who have responsibility, people who have authority, people who are in positions of leadership. Certainly the, uh, the ruling group of people in Israel at that point, but not just in terms of the king and his, uh, his direct minions, but also this is a commentary to the prophets of Israel in that day. One of the characteristics of a, uh, of a real prophet is that uh, they don't just say, hey, everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be wonderful. You're all going to be happy. It's 
going to be good. It's all good. You know, God is blessing you, even though you're raping and pillaging and killing and, uh, and stealing and all these kind of things. It's okay, because God really loves you. You know, um, true prophets don't do that. And so Ezekiel is a true prophet, and he's speaking to the leaders and saying, get off your high horse, get down on the ground, and do what it is that you have been called to do if, in fact, you are a leader, a shepherd of Israel. And the same thing is true for all of us in our lives as followers of Jesus Christ. You know, it's all well and good, and it's wonderful to think about God as being the good shepherd and caring for us in every way, and, and, and you ought to dwell on that. Let your mind meditate on that. Think about that. Pursue that in your thoughts, and, and, uh, and uh, let that be the last thought on your mind as you're going to sleep at night, and the first thought on your mind when you get up in the morning. But there are other thoughts that we need to be engaging in. And, uh, and that is our responsibilities before the Lord, to lift up the name of Christ, to be an example of goodness, self-sacrifice, love, and pursuit of God. And, uh, and so you, you can see, you know, one of the reasons why uh, God comes in and says, and I will do this for you, I will do this with you, I will do this to you is because the leaders, the people themselves, are so incapable of leading correctly and leading well, leading with love, and leading the way God wants them to lead. They're not effective shepherds. They're not good shepherds. They only care about themselves. They do not care for the world. And they certainly, and most importantly, don't care for God. They don't listen to him. They don't pay attention to him. We know that they didn't because what happens? The, uh, the warnings that are laid upon them eventually are fulfilled. God offers us warnings, and he offers us encouragement, and he offers us opportunities. And, uh, and you know, you have the option at every point to receive the warning and change and pursue God. Or to reject it. They rejected it. Uh, we look at the world around us today and we see a wholesale rejection of God. We see a wholesale rejection of God's law. We see a wholesale rejection of God's love. We see a wholesale rejection of God's authority. Um, these are not good things. So I guess uh, one of the things that, uh, that comes out of this passage really for me is that there are indeed <clears throat> blessings and um, uh, purpose in following God because God knows each one of us who follows. We are not in the same position as the nation of Israel was at that point. We are, uh, <clears throat> if you will, independent contractors with God in a very different way than the nation of Israel was. And yet, as the nation of Israel was a representative of an individual, if you will, in the world. So we are individuals. And so there are similarities and there are disparities between those things. But the point is that God is pursuing you. God is desiring to include you in the flock. But if you're going to be in the flock, you need to be in the flock. You need to be a part of God's plan. You need to be submitting yourself to God. Otherwise, um, rather than being part of God's answer, you are part of the problem that God had to come up with an answer for. And, uh, and you know, God is patient with us. Oh, my goodness. Right up to the moment of death. You know, we have time, and I've certainly seen that uh, you know, what, what has been, become known as deathbed conversions. I've seen it time and time and time again. And I literally introduce somebody to Christ and then watch them die moments later. Okay. Um, but uh, how much greater is it if we submit now to not just the authority of God, 
But when we submit to the authority of God, we get fully engaged in his love, in his protection, in his care. And it is an eternal love, an eternal protection, and a, an eternal care, which doesn't stop the realities of the world from impacting our lives, but does offer us something that is so far beyond anything that this world offers that there is no comparison. Claim the Good Shepherd today. Really pursue God. Follow him. Chase after him. Pursue him. And uh, what you're going to find is that God is pursuing you with his love and his grace. Will you pray with me? Now may the Spirit which was in Jesus Christ be in us, enabling us to know God's will and empowering us to do God's will. Amen. All right, have a great day, and uh, I anticipate uh, connecting with you again tomorrow morning.